Hey everyone, I am so excited to have an amazing conversation today. Uh, my name is Olivia and I'm the director of Claim Your Campus and I have an amazing friend here who um, he's been an amazing leader in my life has impacted me so much. I want to introduce Zach Coffin. He is the director of Next Gen Multiplication and Discipleship in the Wesleyan Church and um, I just grew up learning so much from this guy. I have seen him do incredible things through conferences, events, speaking, um, but he's been impacting students for a long time. And uh, we're just going to have a conversation about this generation, about prayer, um, and about this time that we're in. I'm excited um, for him to share. So yeah, Zach, do you want to introduce yourself, where you're from? Sure. A quick hello. Yeah, what's up? It's always good to see you. Always yeah. super proud of you. Love you a ton. But yeah, so I'm Zach Coffin in Indianapolis, Indiana, getting to help the Wesleyan Church and Really uh, just love what God's wanting to do in this generation. Got a couple kids, been married for 15 years, been doing youth and kids ministry for 18 years. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, my heart's cries to see the Lord release revival in the world. And I, I truly believe that Gen Z is going to be a, a huge linchpin for what, what God's wanting to do in this season. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, so good. So you and your wife, Becca, you guys have been in youth ministry for a while. Um, can yeah. you share a little bit of your background in youth ministry? Yeah. So, I mean, I started, um, started on like in, in basically full-time ministry, even through college. And so I've been pastoring and preaching since I was 19. Uh, my wife and I started dating when we were 19. And so we've been together that whole time, just doing ministry together. It's looked different in different seasons. Um, mm -hmm. Everything from kids ministry to youth ministry, to leading next-gen teams, to leading at a multi-site church, um, now at a denominational headquarters. And uh, really what I love about what I get to do now is I just get to help churches. And so I get to help mm -hmm. equip and inspire uh, local church leaders who are really the center of the target of what God's wanting to do. And so, yeah, I just love being able to get to speak and hopefully start yeah. some, start some fires. So, yeah, for sure. And you've been able to travel and still meet with students and connect and preach. Yeah. What do you notice um, about this generation, about students that you think we should know as we are like reaching this generation, whether it be for the pastor, for the parent, or the student who feels called to like reach their school, yeah. or reach their generation, what would you say to that person? Yeah, I mean, I think the, and, and this probably isn't that profound, but I think sometimes it's helpful to just say the, the simple things out loud is that, you know, following Jesus for each generation has looked very different, The last, especially, I mean, I'll just say the last 50 years, 60 years, right? So like, and, and, and I can say, speak for me personally, when I was following Jesus, um, it was culturally cool at different moments to follow Jesus. So I could have one foot, honestly, if I'm really transparent, I could have one foot in the world and one foot in the church and I could bounce back and forth. And that was actually celebrated and cool. Like I could be cool with my Jesus friends. I could be cool with my world friends and like, kind of like bounce back and forth. It's just a different world now. And so I think what I, I, I think, and I say this everywhere I go is like, I think what we have to realize for Gen Z is that for them, they're they're one of the first generations in a while, I would say, that actually following Jesus is going to demand a life change in ways that past generations haven't done, which means the way that they're being shepherded is going to feel more radical to past generations, and it's going to feel more extreme. But I think it's that extreme that the church needs right now, that the zeal of the youth is actually what this, the, the, this generation, we, we, we need to unleash that zeal versus trying to, to squelch that zeal. So they're going to seem like radical and passionate Christ followers. And I think that's exactly what God's wanting to unleash. And so for those of us who are leading youth ministries or have kids this age, we need to not worry or be fearful of the world, but actually release our kids into it saying, you know what? The Lord knew that my kids were going to be born to this generation for this generation. So what can I do to, to, to encourage them to unleash the kingdom of God wherever they're going and be right in the middle of God's will, no matter where that is. And so I think that that level of courage and excitement and radical uh, following of Jesus is exactly what Gen Z wants to do right now. And they need older people to say, oh yeah, go do it, do it. Oh yeah. That's not weird. Like, no, go go do it. Go do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I think I'm, I'm so passionate about that because I've seen people like you do that. Um, I am so like, I feel so blessed because 
Um, I know I've got a lot of ministry ahead of me, but I have a lot of ministry experience behind me because of leaders like you. Um, and, you know, leaders like Charlie Alcock, he works at Indiana Wesleyan University. Um, sure. He was someone that gave me so many ministry experiences. Ian Nacy, he was my middle yeah. school pastor. Like, I think one generation handing it off to the next to be bold and to live yeah. out their faith is what we need. And yep. so I really appreciate that in you. And I think that's what we're trying to do at Claim Your Campus. Like, we don't go into a school and, and hold a student's hand to lead a prayer meeting. Like, they do it themselves, yeah. you know, and, and then it takes a lot of boldness. It takes a lot of courage. It's very different to be and that it, weird and prayer person. And, and it's yeah. messy to do leadership that way too, right? Like past mm -hmm. generations, and I'll be really blunt, past generations are continuing to hold on to the keys of leadership when they should have handed them off 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we're seeing at times this broadening gap between generations when it comes within leadership. And it's because generations are holding onto the keys of leadership for far too long. Mm -hmm. And so my hope is that what we'll see in the church is, and I think Claiming Your Campus says this really well, is to say, here's some tools, go do it. And I'm here to help you however you need help. And then we can shepherd them along the way. Because I would rather shepherd students as they go than try to motivating them. Like I, like, like I would, like one of the things we say, like we have really uh, fiery children in my house. Like both of our daughters are, are spitfires and they get it very honestly from their parents. And the Lord gave me this word a long time ago, and it's not, it's not clever. And it's just something I, he, the Lord's like, I would rather corral a stallion than have to motivate a donkey. Mm. And it was like, it's such like, I'm a farm guy. And so like farm, my farm mind, I'm like, yes, I get that. But what it is, is like, I would rather shape and mold someone who's running fast and hard than try to motivate someone who's like, passive and all that stuff so it's like we've got this generation who's really passionate about jesus we've been begging god for that and so mm -hmm. like let's not try to throw water on that fire let's find ways to point them in the right way so that they can burn through the earth and bring revival and bring the presence of god with them wherever they're going that's so good how would you this is just the question i'm thinking how would you encourage like a pastor or a parent who has that fiery kid um mm -hmm. that wants to go but it's, it feels hard to trust the process, you know, because it, it is messy. What would, how would you encourage that adult? Um, the first thing I would say is, I mean, I believe in the providential hand of God. And I believe that the Lord entrusts us as parents and pastors to shepherd and steward those relationships in our life. And so, like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have a young kid. I mean, a 10 year, uh, almost, almost a 10 year old. So a nine year old and a six year old. And I'll have parents come up to me and like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine having kids in this generation. Like, oh, culture is so terrible, blah, you know? Mm -hmm. And first of all, I'm like, thank you. That's a very, thank you for blessing me with that encouragement <laughs> as a parent. I feel very loved and cared for right now. <laughs> um, and so that's one, it's like, what a terrible thing to say to a young parent. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what I feel like the Lord really challenged me in that is to go, Zach, I knew that your kids like if, if they're knitted together in the mother's womb and you really believe that about my hand of providence, I've given you these kids in this season, knowing the culture for which they were going to walk. And so I can either walk in fear of the culture or I can walk on mission to the culture with my family. And so I'm not going to build this white picket fence around my family and be like, and, and a giant moat, forget the white picket fence. Like I'm not going to build this moat around my family. The most important thing for me and my kids is I want them to be so familiar with the presence of God that knowing the presence of God and experience the presence of God is so normal to them so that then they know the difference between light and darkness when they're going out to culture. If they don't know the light, they're not going to know the darkness. So if I can shepherd them and, and put experiences in their life and parent them in a way or shepherd them or put them in churches or pastors or whoever we're talking to here, I want them to know who Jesus is. So at such a deep level that they can tell the difference between light and dark, because then I'm not going to have to fear them going out into the culture because they then understand that they're going out on mission versus trying to fit in because if we really are strangers in this world let's just live into that reality and so parents trust that god has given you those kids usually parents that are super insecure about that they're actually probably insecure about their own faith and their own faith walk journey and so parents being really honest about your own personal walk with the lord and if it's not where you want it to be like really wrestle with the lord of go okay lord like i'm not in a place where i'm supposed to be which i don't want to perpetuate that in my family tree so like lord what do i what need what work do I 
I need to do in my life because I'm first a disciple before I'm a parent. And pastors, I'd go, okay, these students in your church, they are not a resource or a pipeline to be wielded for your ministry. They are a gift to be stewarded. So what are the dreams and vision that the Lord's wanting to do in the student's life and, and allow those things to work themselves out? Because what happens with pastors a lot is we look at the younger generation as a pipeline of ministry. And I go, no, 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 they're not a pipeline. Mm. These are real destinies where God's put dreams and visions in them. So let's steward that well. Yeah. And as God puts dreams and visions in them, we fan those things into flame. And if that happens to benefit our quote unquote local church, that's great. If it happens to be a benefit in other spaces, let's release them with passion and fire and provision and resource, blessing them and mm -hmm. sending them out. We've got to, we've got to really look at this generation as much more as a sending agency and, a, and, and to be able to send them out and encourage them versus this, like, let's just hold on to them. And then let's just put the little box around them. It's like, no, like I would rather deal with the challenges of sending people out than the stagnancy of keeping people in. Yeah. That's so good. I think you're speaking our heart language too, because it's, you know, we do need to send this generation. We do. And so I just appreciate your words so much and how you actually live that out. Zach, thank you so much for actually believing and trusting in the next generation. Um, even when they're unqualified and untrained, but that's how they learn how to do ministry. That's how they learn how to grow in their faith is when they're given those opportunities. Yeah. So thank you so much. You don't and, learn how to drive a car by uh, sitting in your house. You've got to get behind yeah. the wheel. And I've had people in my life who have given me keys when Zach was a young, dumb college kid who was just trying to work it out and figure it out. And what I appreciated about those people in my life is they didn't look at me as a young, dumb college kid or a young adult who didn't know what they're doing. They said, that dude has God-given potential and I want to help cultivate that. And we need cultivators of the next generation, not critics. Yeah. I'll say it again. We need cultivators of the next generation, not critics. And so if we want to see revival come and we want to see this next generation engaging in, in ministry in different ways, man, it's our responsibility uh, to cultivate those, those, those young people, because those are fires to be tended, yeah. not fires to extinguish. So yeah, yeah, it's good. So good. Ooh, just that last section. Wow. We need to print that on a poster. That was good. Um, would you pray for us? Yeah. Um, something that we've been praying as a ministry is for 1 million students in America to be praying that we would yeah, truly really equip this generation to pray to be intercessors for their campus, for their generation. And so, um, yeah, as someone who is pouring into and sending the next generation, would you pray into that for us to close our time? Yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Lord, uh, we recognize that every great move of God has never been a strategy. It's never been a program. Mm -hmm. It's never been a structure. God, every great move that you've done in the world has not been through, not been an organization. God, every great move has been birthed from the secret place of prayer. And God, so we pray right now in the name of Jesus for fire to fall mm -hmm. on Gen Z and millennials and Xers and boomers and bridgers and everybody else in between. It's mm -hmm. been before and before and past and future, God. We even pray for the alphas who are coming as well, God, that you would send your fire, God, that you would, and that it would be this fire that burns out of deep, deep intimacy for you, God not out of platform, not out of performance, not out of striving, God, but that their lives would be so focused on the heart of the Father, mm -hmm. that the first love would drive all things. Yes. God, and we do ask you for a million intercessors, a million prayer warriors to be raised up in schools, God. Mm -hmm. God, and that, that that one million would be the fuel for the billion soul harvest, God. That, 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 that schools would, would, would truly be these mission fields and places where we don't look and see, uh, we don't look at schools as places of fear and, and pain, God, but we look at places, uh, schools as places where mini deep ministry is happening because we've released this generation to be missionaries mm -hmm. in dark places. And so, Father, we thank you for this generation being born in this time, and we bless them. We beg you to unleash them. God, give us kingdom eyes. Those of us who have leadership and influence, parents, pastors, ministry leaders over this generation. God, give us kingdom eyes to see what you're wanting to do. And we just pray like the old gospel hymn says, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without us. Call us in line. 
we say yes to you, whatever it is, Father. We beg you for revival. We beg you that you would use us and help us to know how to uh, support what you're doing. It's your work by your hand. It's your labor. And we just want to be a part of it, Father. We bless you in your name. You're worthy, King Jesus. Amen. 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 So cool, good. Dude. Thank you so much. Love you much. Tongue, girly. Yeah. Oh my love you. Love Keep you at too. it. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Zach, so much. We'll see you later. Anytime. See you.